Wonderful to be in person here to talk to you about LECO. And it's very exciting, right? So, so when you think all of the different opportunities that we have, I want to talk to you something that has impact today, something that is in market today, and it's only the beginning of, of a real fundamental shift of how we build in the future. We're talking carbon negative construction. Why is it important? You've seen it 10 times already today. Housing is the biggest uh, or one of the biggest uh, sectors in, in terms of the pollution. Not going to spend a lot of time, right? But concrete as a material is hard to, to get into a net zero abatement. And even if you do, we still use a tremendous amount of drinking water, of sand, and all of the things that go in it. But we need concrete and steel today to, to go and, and keep up with the demand for housing. So we're talking about billions of homes that still need to be built in, in the coming decades. And, and that's fundamentally like, how do we solve that, right? How do we actually continue to build, do what we need to do, but do it in a way that we're not continue to end up having this debt, right? This, this carbon debt and maybe making a little bit better buildings and then slowly get down that curve. So uh, we're talking here about a fundamentally new way of building. And I'm super excited to, to share with you a bit how we're thinking about this. Today, we're building, in, in many cases, uh, concrete and steel construction. So, so you have people on the site. They're, they're slowly pouring buildings and, and growing buildings. But th the way we are thinking at LECO about building is fundamentally different. So we're talking about using automotive robotics to build buildings in a way that hasn't been done before. And at the core of it, we're using wood. So a gentleman earlier talked about uh, forestry and, and so on. There's tremendous um, things that are happening in, in forestry, but there is an incredible opportunity to use wood as probably the only building material that grows naturally to do that and, and to use it in, in a totally new way. And we can spend hours on, like, can you do it sustainably? Yes, the answer is, in Europe, we've seen sustainable forest growth. And we have, actually, wood for millions of homes per year that is simply growing in Europe. So what is the LECO system? We went and said completely from scratch, how do we create this sustainably, right? So how do we use sustainable wood? Um, we, we were looking at how do we manufacture it in a way that uh, we use a lot less glue than what you see in CLT, cross-laminated timber, 95% of it. We're having a system where you use actually 50% less wood than if you were to build with wood. But more importantly, when we go into construction, we created something that uses 75% less concrete and steel. So everything above ground is made out of wood. And then occupancy, the buildings are highly insulated, about 90% less heating and cooling needed. And last but not least, you can recycle these buildings. So, so we're talking about an opportunity not to, to really have a cradle-to-cradle -cradle net negative uh, carbon footprint of our buildings. And given what I said at the beginning, that is actually really fundamental and, and potentially a, a huge opportunity to change the world and to change the world now. At the core of it, there's a material innovation that sits there, and it's, it's basically a, a very, very strong superstructure, a, a wood lattice with uh, insulation built in, and it replaces all concrete and, and all steel in a building above ground. So, so imagine all you need is actually a concrete foundation, much lighter, and above everything that you build is made out of wood, wood fiber, so, so completely natural. So, in a way, you could argue we make our buildings vegetarians. Right? Somebody said that the other day. I, I like it as a, as a, as a concept. So w why does it work? Wood is incredibly strong as a material. It's actually, when you look at um, the, the concrete block there on the left crumbling uh, at 10 tons, that's why we need to put in steel into the concrete in order to, to even start to compete against this material. So, so using this engineered wood lattice has, has the potential to sustain incredible forces. And that's what we're using. So, what we built is a platform uh, to use this, um, this superstructure lattice to optimize each and every single building so that when we're actually looking at it, we can create entire new buildings based on a simple architect's 2D plan and then go and optimize the buildings and optimize the superstructure to only use the amount of wood that is really needed. Right? So okay. imagine, of course, the lower floors, they need more, more wood than an upper floor. If you build out of concrete, every floor wall thickness is about the same because, of course, the lower ground floors need to carry everything that is above. So we built this technology platform that is not only letting us to design a building based on an architect's plan in, in a matter of an hour. We can completely recreate an entire building that is meant to be a concrete building. So we can replace that with a, with a wood building, if you want. But it's also an end-to-end -end digital foot, um, blueprint for that building to be designed to be built in our factory. And that's today. 
So we have that full digital end-to-end -end, uh, twin, and that's where we're manufacturing our buildings today. Um, and uh, we're also doing the full thermal analysis with our AI platform. So, so we can also not only design the building, but the, the entire building is thermally optimized, and that's in a matter of uh, hours, and, and because actually we build the, the, the technology that sits behind. And in our next step, what we are doing is where we are today manually assembling uh, the buildings, we're actually moving into automotive robotics to, to assemble the, uh, the walls. So imagine there, that's actually sort of a wall panel. You have zero waste. You have basically two robots that are doing this, and our two test robots um, uh, having already done the proof of concept doing, doing exactly that. So with this technology, we can take the next step up and actually say, why not use the most the tools of the most advanced industry in the world, the automotive, and start manufacturing our walls that we need in the future. And the impact of that, of course, is tremendous, right? So, so you need you're actually moving something from the building site into a clean factory. You can scale that up in a completely different way. And when we're talking about the, the productivity gains from that, when, when you actually see what is currently planned how you can assemble an entire wall segment in a matter of hours. And when you think about that wall segment, that's sort of three by six meters um, wall segment, that's about 10 tons of, of concrete and steel. Replacing that with just one wall segment, replacing that with uh, the LECO structure, you're placing the, the annual emission of, um, of, an, of a person for in, in Europe. And the point today is we're doing this even without the robotics, the robotics being our next step. We are in market, we are building buildings today and selling them profitably. And I'm saying this very, very deliberately because the technology here does not rely on philanthropy. So, so we don't need uh, wealthy billionaires to say, like, look, let's go and save the planet. It doesn't rely on, on any government credits, anything like that, but actually it relies on, on pure and simple economics. It's a beautiful example here where we see there's a gray building there and there's a blue building. The gray building is made out of concrete top standard, and, and the blue building is actually a LECO house. Looks exactly the same from the outside. But the punchline is that because we have inbuilt insulation in our walls, the walls are about 40% smaller or thinner than the ones in the concrete building, resulting in actually that building having an extra 21 square meters. Now, it's, it's uh, actually built in Luxembourg, so the economic impact of that is tremendous. That's about almost 40% uh, of the entire building cost that the developer can sell in extra square meters. So we're making building that building that is fundamentally green at the, at the point of completion has a carbon negative uh, footprint. We're making that economically very attractive to do. And also the cost even... The net cost of building it is very comparable to using uh, to doing this with, uh, with a normal traditional concrete way. So with that, the, the real kind of punchline here is let's make the economics the drivers of change. So, so we're having developed a, a new technology that replaces the concrete and the steel above ground. It's a highly versatile platform, so, so we don't need to have architects change their ways. They don't need to use our walls. They design whichever walls they want to design. And we can very simply and very efficiently go and build those and, and making these optimized buildings. We are moving right now from individual family homes and larger uh, projects into office spaces. We're talking to people who build data centers. We're talking about um, large, uh, large residential complexes where when you build 100 apartments, you basically get 5 to 10 apartments for free as a developer to sell in order to scale up the, the technology. So in summary, it's interesting for developers because they're making more money because they have more space to sell. The, the entire end-to-end um, uh, -end landscape doesn't need to change because the, the platform is so versatile that it can just take that in. We have a carbon negative footprint from the start. It's very fast to build. So you've seen that in the previous uh, presentation. You can stick them together in no time and we're gonna go and scale it up with robotics. So we're on a mission, 1% is the goal. It's, it's a pretty ambitious mission, but here's very, very fundamental opportunity to do this and to do it now and not a sort of in the future abatement type of scheme. It's happening and it's economically sensible to do it. Thank, Thank you, you so very much.